Hello, and we are live. Well, Kathleen and I, we are so pleased. We have a great guest uh, with us today. But before we get into introductions uh, for our guests, let me please introduce myself. My name is Emily Bolton, and Kathleen, you're out there. I am. Hi. <laughs> Kathleen Packard, and uh, I'm excited to be here today with our guest. Yes, we are in for an amazing, amazing interview. Um, it turns out this just sort of fell into a women's week here. Uh, we lined up all these women, and we just decided to go with it and make it a power-packed women's week. And today we are so blessed with a very wonderful guest, a gutsy gal, and we are going to be finding out a little more about Ro DeSaro. She is an author, a speaker, and a crusader for the gutsy gal life, and we can't wait to hear her story and share with us about what she's written, what kind of speaking engagement she has, and what's this crusader for a gutsy gal life. Well, thank you so much, Ro, for joining us. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Wow. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, a little bit about myself. It goes back a long ways. <laughs> <laughs> I um, Right now, I am a, I, I call myself a mentor, a guide, you know, kind of like a gutsy gal guide for women entrepreneurs. Uh, and these are women who are heart-inspired, heart-centered, soul-based, uh, mostly service-oriented uh, type businesses. And and the reason why I work with them is I used to work at Corporate America. And I worked in, in the 80s. I worked on Wall Street. And I, I actually, like, my claim to fame is that I broke several glass ceilings back in the 80s uh, on Wall Street. And... After the stock market crash, and, and then some years later, uh, you know, late 90s, I went into more like kind of like you know entrepreneurial type in, endeavors, and and I've been and I actually developed a uh, a huge direct sales network marketing type business. And what and then what happened is I've seen is you know I'm building my team, and I'm networking with so many women business owners, and I, I love working with women, and I'm going to all these networking events, and I'm. And I'm seeing that they're creating their own glass ceilings, and they're, it's like it was like I was almost, almost like I was back in corporate America. Yet we would blame society and blame that it's a man's world. Why we're not getting paid enough? And then I'm um, sitting next to all these amazing women. The confidence is huge, yet their confidence is low, and and because their confidence is low, they're creating their own glass ceilings, and they're not still breaking those six figures. So about a year and a half ago, I decided to go into that next phase of my life and really expand, you know, from the network marketing industry and really helping women in general and helping all women in business owners. And the most of the women that I find myself working with are the heart heart based, heart centered, because those are the ones that they can promote you, they can promote everyone else, but when it comes to promoting themselves, they hit a brick wall. <laughs> Kathleen, <laughs> Kathleen, did you hear this woman? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, why did we have on the right guest, right? And you know, let me just say from the get go. Um, in the 80s too, you know, I uh, I actually just blew through a whole lot of uh, glass ceilings in uh, corporate America as well. My start um, was with a big eight accounting firm, and I actually ended up with the number one spot in my office for the incoming class. And so I really, really nailed it. I, you know, I had a secretarial background, but the schooling, and I kind of went in, and I just kind of really nailed this. And I ended up going into um, a corporate position, and I got the no like a. a I encountered uh, this uh, leader. He actually was the personal technical secretary to the president CEO um, of this uh, Fortune 100 company. And I met him in the stairwell. Well, as it turns out, um, he wanted me on a special projects team. And my um, my 
my boss and his boss, they dubbed me the right hand to the right hand of God because you got the CEO, you got his right hand person, and I'm that right hand person to the right hand person. So it's kind of a funny, funny thing. But you know, I I ended up leaving corporate, staying home with my children. I had a major tax practice. I started my own, but then I let it go. And then I was home with my kids for, you know, it's been, what, 16, 17 years. And coming back in, <laughs> let's just say I'm not as gutsy as I used to be. So. <laughs> I can't believe you're on and saying all this great stuff because Kathleen and I are definitely um, want to hear every word you have to say. And, you know, I could to I can totally relate to um, not being as gutsy as you used to be because that's exactly what happened to me as well. Um, you know, I was very gutsy in the '80s, and, and then going through mergers and acquisitions, and on again and off again, and you know, and then having my children late in life, I did that 40 and pregnant thing, um, <laughs> and. I, there was a time in my life where I lost my, my own self-confidence and, and lost myself. And, and it was a really odd way of the way I got it back was because um, I was a facilitator for a women's networking group here locally. And I knew the owners, and they were starting a publishing company. And they wanted me to write in their first book, Empowering Transformations for Women. And they knew I was a 9-11 survivor. And they really wanted somebody in that book to discuss about surviving that day and what it was like. And so this was in 2006. So this is like several years later. And I said, and I felt obligated to them. I love them. And I says, and it was like, I said, writing is totally not, not anything I've ever been confident on. But I felt obligated and I just... But my gut was just saying, I said, I said no for many, for the longest time I was saying no, no, no. But my gut was saying, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. And I got that last email, two spots left, last call, and I was like, okay, I'm doing it. I don't know how, but I'm just going to do it. And I did it. And once I made that commitment to write a chapter in her book, I now said, okay, now she wants me to write about my 9-11 well, I don't know. I haven't really been thinking too much about it. All I've always done was really think about everyone else. I never really internalized it to myself. So once I started to dig deeper, I started to realize my actions of that day and what I did. And then I remembered that while everybody was running away, while everyone was running to catch their boat, I actually let two of my own personal boats go uh, come and leave. I chose to stay in the midst of the fire when everybody is running to save their souls. I'm looking for my family. I'm looking for my friends. I said my car is right across the river because I, I live in New Jersey, so it's just a short ride. It's a five-minute boat ride from New York to New Jersey, for those who don't know. And, and I was like, my car is right across the way, and the cell phones weren't working, so I'm like, I'm not leaving until I find everybody. I, had my, I was working with my brother at the time. I was working with a nephew. And... I realized that from that that you know what my my natural ability to to be strong and to be tough and to serve others is innate because when you're in the heat of the moment like that when you're in a tragedy you you, you could only be your authentic self there's no way you could be like self doubt there's no t you, there's there's no there's no time for that in that kind of environment so I realized from that that this is who I am and so why should I be self-doubting myself and then I started to realize that from there the only thing that was stopping me was my self-limiting beliefs, my doubts, my fears and the biggest realization was that the emotional wall that was protecting me from disappointment was also separating me from my dream. Mm. Oh yes, oh yes. And, and that just I just got chills just saying it. Um, that just propelled me into this whole business. So from writing that book, getting out of my comfort zone, helped me reclaim my power, helped me reclaim my confidence, and it has brought me where I am now today. Which is the book came out in 2007, so seven years later. This has all been because of that one moment in time where I listened to my gut and I said, "I'm going to do it and figure it out later." Hmm. Wow. So um, just uh, to give us a little bit of closure there, was your family all right? Everybody that you knew you were looking for, did you find them and all? Thank you for asking. Yes, everybody was fine. They, they didn't, I, I was actually home because I was, my car was, I took the, actually took the last boat and as soon as I got across the other side, the first tower fell. Um, 
they didn't get home to like midnight and then I found out that you know one or two actually never worked ran to work late didn't even work didn't even get in because I never made it into my office in my building that morning um, I actually witnessed the first plane and we all got on the boat anyway so <laughs> crazy day but um, yes everyone's fine thank you yeah. well, praise be to God that um, you had all that shield of protection around you wow what a yeah whew, you know what an amazing story and and that reclaiming and that finding your power again, you're going to be so wonderful for our viewers and, mm -hmm. and women in general. And we kicked the week off really speaking about um, some of the low self-esteem issues and the valuation issues. So even though women may very well step into the marketplace, um, mm -hmm. then they have issues like money's not coming their way. And... Um, they're not really making money or, or, or whatever and, and the issue of how currency and money and how it's related to an exchange of value and when one doesn't value themselves highly um, then there's that blockage if you will there's, there's that's the level at which and that's that glass ceiling you're referring to and um, wow that is such a shame um, for us so Tell us um, how you help, um, how you're helping women with that, please. I I've created a lot of different uh, coaching programs. Um, actually, I became a cert I became certified coach. I'm certified as a money marketing and soul coach. And so, one of the programs, for example, is um, is be able to brand your business with your your, your with your spirit, with your personality, and with your passions, and incorporate that to everything you do. Incorporate it into your marketing. So really bring your authenticity out, uh, because when you're coming from the place of who you are, you're, you're powerful, and you're going to attract the people who want to be attracted to you. And therefore, you don't have to spin your wheels with marketing, and you don't have to be out there selling. You don't have to be. They'll be coming to you because they're going to be loving everything you're saying and, and, and that's really all about. So I help women do that. I deal a lot with the mindset issues obviously. <laughs> um, you know, building confidence and and really going through the un, uncovering the limiting beliefs. So I do that a lot. I have another program. I deal a lot with money. Money oh, block. Yeah. Money Absolutely. issues. Absolutely. Uh, not discounting, charging what they're worth. So I have a lot of templates, a lot of exercises, a lot of programs. I have another. I have a lot of workshops coming up where I'm going to be talking about niche breakthrough secrets, so that they could really. A lot of women, what I found is, you know, they want to help and serve everyone, and they're so great. But so they're like, well, my product is for the whole world, and yet when you speak to the whole world it gets confusing and it gets muffled so nobody responds so I, I really teach that you really need to have a major uh, niche and I say niche because I'm from Brooklyn so I know if you're from Canada and West Coast it's niche <laughs> so it's it, for me it's niche um, but when you chunk it really down to one particular type it opens up the whole world and then when when you have that established you can add another one and you can make your little branches and branch out from it but you gotta start from one and not be afraid of that well this is only going to speak to this one and therefore I'm leaving all these other people on the table and I want to help the world because the only way to help the world is to really start that way and then branch out it's it, it's a kind of like a backwards way of way we think it's supposed to be and way it actually works <laughs> so I do a lot of programs like that you know, that is just, I can't express how important that is, the, the work that you're doing, because so many, um, just like you say, they, they want to do the whole world, and but everybody's got something that is going to be unique to them, that, that is, if they mark it to, like you say, that niche, that it's going to be so much more effective and I think that um, learning that and reinforcing and, and reinforcing that it's okay to be who they are. They don't have mm -hmm. to be somebody different, you know, to do this. That mm -hmm. you know, embrace who they are because they're unique, they're they're God's child and uh, they're perfect just as they are. 
and that's how they enjoy their business and that's when the fun comes in and that's yeah. when you have the time and you're enjoying it and and now you're not stressed out and overwhelmed I mean that's like the amazing thing I realized this a few years back when I didn't understand it because I was the people I was looking at were like the Marie Folios and Allie Browns and you know Lisa Satchevich's and they're all like they do and I look at them and I say well they're doing all these different things but then if you really chunk it down they all became famous for one thing. Yes. So that's when somebody pointed it out to me, and I was like, "Oh, it was like a light bulb just went off." And I you know, like, you're famous for one, so now you can reach the world. Yes. Yeah, so I'm sorry for interrupting you. Sorry. And I think um, there is just this awakening happening, and I believe it is in part because we do have social media, and mm -hmm. we have so many of these um, problems, if you will, in common. So we're seeking these answers. We're seeking a solution, and so we're going out online. And so thanks be to God for good marketing, because we're finding yes. some of these. And you are absolutely right, because um, even for myself, I can see, though I started to come back in for the tax, in particular tax planning, because there is such a need. And so while I tend to do more high-end tax planning, um, that's not what the need really, there is the need, don't, don't misunderstand me. But coming online and into this um, niche, really I've discovered the the, the draw, people are coming to me and what they're asking for is just what you are doing and I find now that I too am working in the financial wellness realm but we've all, you know, we've grown and there is this awakening that's happening. We are really call to work from this heart center. Kathleen and I are all over that one. And, you know, we, we realize, you know, we're in this um, kind of online marketing space, but we realize, like, we're not really good marketers. <laughs> That's, like, not our thing. But you know what we realized we had? Is we realize that we have this heart for people and that we just really want to lift other people up and that that's what really works for us. That's where we're flowing. That's where we're happiest. Now, how can we do that? And, you know, we'll get joy and all these other things will come unto us as a result of just going out there and doing our thing and helping others and lift them up. But by, um, oh my goodness, I am like you discovering that truly uh, there is just not enough of us out there who have an understanding of the financial wellness who have an understanding of the mindset issues that so many women and others you know men as well um, have and so um, we all have our sphere of influence mm -hmm. and people really um, need us so you're just amazing because you're really involved in a lot of network um, and I think you have a couple of things what kind of I don't want to run out of time before you get a chance to share about how you are so proactively helping in this realm oh are you talking about the uh, speaking engagements I have coming up yeah I mean if you don't mind I, I'd love no. to be able to have you share that because that and tell us a little bit about what your part is that we that's so interesting well I love to I, I love to speak I like just that's been a calling I've been feeling and been self-doubting and putting myself down for a few years so I just try to get myself out there and speak in front of women as much as possible because I find women connect um, emotionally so live events women really get it so I, I do that through speaking so this um, this fall September 20th I have the small uh, small business uh, boot camp for women in Newark New Jersey it's a uh, day and a half women's conference that I'm speaking at then I have uh, E Think Tank for Moms. It's another networking organization uh, in Freehold, New Jersey, for great for, for moms and, and business women together. They have a two-day conference. I'm doing two workshops there. One on Awaken Your Inner Gutsy Gal, um, Three Steps to Clarity, Confidence, and Cash. Because it's all about, it's always about confidence, it's about cash, but it's about having a good time and, and doing it from the heart. So, And then uh, the other one is on my niche, Breakthrough Secrets. Then um, I'm speaking at three different uh, Grow Tour uh, presentations, one in Staten Island, New York, one in northern New Jersey, and one in southern New Jersey in October. I'm uh, going to be doing the same workshops there, again, for women's workshops. So I'm thrilled that they said yes to me and, and said, yes, we want to hear more about it. And 
come on out and share with all women. So it's exciting uh, to be able to do that. I just did a live, my uh, virtual training yesterday on uh, feminine gutsy leadership. That is, uh, my whole thing is all about, it's about elegant gutsy. You know, because gut, gutsy is really just running your business on your terms. Um, it's not about being aggressive and, you know, bitchy and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, so that's, um, that's how I'm getting the word out there in the next uh, few months. And then by the end of the year, I'm going to be doing some online coaching programs and some workshops. So um, I'm doing a lot. I'm giving a lot of free stuff away right now so that, you know, people can come and learn and see. And, and if they like it and they want to learn more, then great. If not, then that's fine too. <laughs> so thank you for asking. Oh, oh, our pleasure. My goodness, that sound. I want to sign, sign me up. <laughs> I wish you were in my backyard. Well, you're not too far. You, you know, you're, you're not too far. Yeah, and I'm from Connecticut, so it wasn't too, you know, too bad. I, I uh, met you in, uh, was it July, right, down in New Jersey for an event. So, um, and we met right at the tail end, so we just did not get a chance to really connect. And right. it's been so uh, wonderful and powerful. I think. Wow, you know, God put us together, and um, for us to be able to bring you to our viewership and just really share, because we do believe that um, we we want to be at that doorway for women and men who are coming and considering: Is it possible to make money online? Is it possible to make money from home? And to you know, if they're worried, is it a scam? Is it you know whatever? And and when they do, we all know they're going to encounter those. Um, just kind of lost you guys, at least the image here. But um, we want them to um, have that kind of comfort that they are, um, you know, that they're safe, that we could put them in with the right people. And you are just a blessing to our viewership. Kathleen, why don't you take over and close us up on? Well, yeah, and there again, this has just been uh, so enlightening. And I think that the message that you brought today, um, you know, with breaking that ceiling again, do not put yourself down to, um, you know, get out there and find who you are and uh, embrace who you are. Yeah. It's such a powerful message for, for women to hear and to, to, and I don't think they can hear it enough, mm. ever. And um, so, and you've got so many things scheduled. I think that's just awesome that, you know, many blessings to you. And oh, thank, thank you. you thank so you. much for being on with us. Oh, thank you for inviting me. I love what you ladies are doing. I think this lunchtime with you guys is a wonderful idea. And that tells me that you know how to market. Why do you have no marketing? <laughs> this is phenomenal. This is great. And one of the things that I love about online, and just to, to end with this, is that I was thinking of this, you know, growing up in New York where, what's New York known for? Besides being the Big Apple. The city that never sleeps. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. I mean, I can think of all these things. i got a rush of thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, over all these things. It's, it's, online is the true city that never sleeps. And that's yeah. why I love doing business online because it never sleeps. I mean, I have people, when people signing up on my list from Mexico and, and, and different countries, it's like, I'm like, I, every time I see a different country, I'm like, oh, it's amazing. I still can't get used to it. Um, <laughs> that whole thing just sent shivers right down through me. So <laughs> there was some yeah. energy with that. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> So and we are so glad for that. You know, um, we truly would love to be able to support that because we know that you are blessing, blessing, blessing women. And um, we cannot thank you enough for blessing our viewership. And um, you'll have to come back and join us again and let us serve you up again. Sure, anytime. Ladies, this was wonderful. Thank you. I love what you're doing, so I'm all for it. That's what I'm all about. And, uh, you know, I keep, I'm going to keep a watch on you because I do a Gutsy Gal of the Week segment on my website. So oh, yeah. I could showcase you ladies for what you're doing with this. Love your story. So I'll be interviewing you next. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. Well, we will wrap this up, but stay on, hang out for just a moment, and we'll say goodbye, and God bless everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. Take care. Bye.